have Jason Munger, I'm an SE from Arctic Wolf. Arctic Wolf, who's heard of Arctic Wolf? First of all, put your hands up. Anybody? One person, you're a winner. You've won the prize. <laughs> so Arctic Wolf uh, is very, very well known in the US. It's a US company, we've got 4,000 customers. We come to EMEA about 18 months ago, which is why we're not as well known as, uh, as maybe some of the other organizations that are here. Um, but we're growing really rapidly. We've, in 18 months, we've grown to uh, yeah, well over 100 people in Europe. As a security company, you can't reference any customers. But we can reference one customer, which is Red Bull. Hence, we have Red Bull on all of our slides, who are a customer and a partner of ours, and we sponsor their car as well. Um, so today, I'm going to talk about from laggard to leader, how to really transform your security very, very quickly as an organization, and how we help you do that. Um, but actually, I'm not going to talk that much about Arctic Wolf. I'm going to talk more about what we see and some of the trends, so some statistics, some of the normal stuff, and then I'll talk about Arctic Wolf at the end. Um, the reason I brought this with me, because if you come to our stand and fill out your email address and name and put it in our bowl, somebody's going to win this today. So I would highly encourage people to uh, participate and go for this. Right. So let's look at some of the trends that we're seeing in the market that I'm guessing all of you guys are seeing as well. So the cloud has killed the perimeter. We all know about that. We've heard a lot about SASE. Uh, this morning in the sessions, um, you know, exploding attack surfaces, more sophisticated bad actors that are attacking organizations en masse now. And statistic here, 90% of security leaders believe that their organization is falling short in terms of cybersecurity. I think that's a pretty common thing from customers that we talk to that don't feel particularly confident in how they're defending against cyber. Generally, and I'll talk about this as we go through the presentation, when we talk to organizations, they've bought lots and lots of security tools. In fact, the amount of money spent on security tools globally every year is eye-watering. It's about, according to Gartner last year, it was about $78 billion spent on uh, cybersecurity tools. It's an enormous amount. There's about 3,000 vendors in cybersecurity. Incredibly cramped and, and busy market. Right. And yet, 90% of security leaders think they're falling short, even though all of that investment has been made into security tools and into a number of different security tools. You probably hear about ransomware a lot today. It's not just about ransomware. It's about business email compromise. It's about data exfiltration. There's all sorts of different types of attacks that are really going to hurt your organization. Um, but ransomware grabs the headlines, and everybody talks about ransomware. It's a really cool site. If you go to Information is Beautiful, and you can look at all sorts of different types of information and cut and slice it how you want it. It gives you really beautiful graphics. Right. And you can see here you know, how it's exploded from a ransomware perspective over the last few years. And no surprises, it's still going up even this year exponentially. And so therefore, quite rightly, it is probably the biggest concern for most organizations. But just keep in mind, it's not the only threat that we face. Some of the challenges that we see in the UK market, um, I'm going to build this slide out, but if you look at the top one, this is probably the biggest point that we see when we talk to customers. 51% of UK firms are suffering from a cyber security skills gap. Not enough people in cyber security. It's very common for us to talk to organisations, we talk to lots of organisations every day, to talk to organisations of a reasonable size, maybe 1,000 users, and they'll have one person dedicated to cyber security full time. It's even more common that we talk to organizations that say, we haven't got anybody dedicated to cyber. It's a shared responsibility model with our IT operations folk. Um, most organizations we talk to, you know, up to several thousand users, don't have the budget, don't have the people that they need to be able to do effective cybersecurity defense themselves. It's a big problem. We've talked about ransomware you know, increasing exponentially. 37% of, uh, as an average increase in cyber insurance premiums, Who's got cyber insurance here? Just a quick show of hands. Three, four, five of you. So under half of you have got cyber insurance. And I guess what those people that have got cyber insurance, you've probably seen your premiums go up. Obviously, what happened in cyber insurance was the, the market rushed in because of uh, yeah, the opportunity to make money off the back of cyber insurance. And they got really burnt. The carriers got really burnt because of ransomware escalating like we've talked about already. And then they rolled back very, very quickly. And what they said was, you're going to have to pay more for your premiums. We're not going to give you as much coverage. And here's a really long form that you need to fill out to prove your cybersecurity controls that you have in place, i.e. prove to me that you're not a risky bet for me to insure. 
And we see that as a driver for a lot of customers to adopt our sort of service, to improve their cyber security, to go from laggard to leader very, very quickly, and also help drive down their cyber insurance premiums. Uh, and the cost of breaches are going up. I've got another slide on that. This is some statistics from our SOC. So again, I'm gonna talk about Arctic Wolf in a, a bit later in the presentation. We deliver security operations as a service. So we have a SOC, we have global SOCs all around the world. Um, for an average customer of Arctic Wolf, Per day, we're collecting 85 million raw observations. So what's an observation? It's a line of a syslog, it's an API call to a cloud-based security tool. That's an awful lot of data coming in. And then our platform analyzes all of that data uh, and uses AI, using ML, using custom and static rule sets, using a whole load of different technologies. And we see about 200, out of, you know, per, per customer per day, about maybe 200 incidents that a real human being will look into. Um, yeah, AI and ML is really important, it's a really good component of defence, but it's not the only thing you need. It's not the silver bullet, as the guy from Dark Trace was saying this morning. You still need human beings. You still need human beings to verify alerts, to look into them, to investigate, to pivot around different log sources before the escalation to customers. And that's what we do at Arctic Wolf. We combine the best of technology with people and with process. And the way that the outcome for our customers, which is the most important thing, so we remove the noise, we remove all the noise away from our customers and we concentrate on finding the signal, verifying it and then escalating it to you. I guess the most important thing about this slide for me is this is what the security teams or the IT operations teams if you don't have a security team are facing. This is the sheer amount of data and telemetry and noise that is coming at those teams. So it's not surprising that most organisations miss, they miss the signal in the noise because there's a real problem with alert fatigue in the industry where you've got a lot of different security tools, cyber security tools on your endpoint, on the network, on the perimeter, public cloud, identity, authentication. If you add up all the different types of security tools you've got and you've got all of that information coming out of those tools, it's not surprising that people miss the signal in the noise. And obviously, as, again, as I heard this morning quite rightly, the threat actors only need to be successful once. So they're just looking for that alert fatigue, that opportunity to get in and, and that's it. So that hopefully puts into context what we're facing as, a, as an industry, as organisations are facing in terms of the sheer volume of data that is coming towards us. We have a company in the US called Tetra Defence. It's a leading uh, incident response company. Now we do incident response as part of Arctic Wolf as part of our service. So not only will we find a signal in the noise, but we'll also do the incident response for you, work with you, tell you exactly how to contain an incident, plus how do we do the guided remediation afterwards. There's a bit more to it than that, but I'll come back to that later. But the company in the US, Tetra Defense, they work only when we bought them with insurance carriers. So all those people that are putting your premiums up, if you had a, a ransomware attack, a, a serious breach, they, you phone your cyber insurer, they go to their panel, they pick Tetra Defense, they're the ones that come in and remediate and solve it for you, do the incident response for you. We bought them as a company, and they give us an awful lot of intelligence, threat intelligence into our platform. Because they're first responders, they are seeing this stuff day in, day out. In fact, Arctic Wolf is seeing this stuff day in, day out. And what we find through real incident response are these kind of four things. Lack of resources to staff the tools. We've talked about that. All of that information coming out and yet not enough people dedicated to cybersecurity. No external scanning. I'm going to talk a bit more about that in a second. You know, initial access, if you think of the MITRE attack framework and you think of how people get into your organization, that initial access. Um, People do pen tests maybe once, twice a year. Pen tests once, twice a year is not enough. You really need to be looking at your external environment because a lot of initial access comes through that. Insufficient cyber insurance, so when they do get hit, they're not got enough coverage in terms of getting that instant response. And the biggest problem for every customer, I would say, and every customer in this room, your organizations, is no, no real IR planning, no real decent IR planning, and no practicing of that incident response plan and understanding it and testing it. That is the key thing to take away from today. So sometimes we call this security by chance. You know, what, what organisations are doing is because it is a bit of a chance. It's a bit of a, it's a bit of a gamble if you aren't doing everything you possibly can. So the first picture here is, it's great having all the cyber security tools, but if nobody's looking at the gate, they're just going to walk straight past it. Okay? And that comes back to the people looking at the cyber security tools. I guess the second problem we see a lot of is I want this because of reasons. It's a bit like a magpie and a flashy silver thing in the, in the wind flying. It's just a new latest buzzword. It's the new latest shiny bit of technology that's going to solve the problem for me. 
it doesn't often solve the problem. And what actually happens is this. IT operations teams, cybersecurity teams that are just completely overwhelmed and running around trying to defend against all the threats that are coming at them. And hopefully that kind of resonates with some of you in the room. Again, going back to Tetra Defense, we did a report, you can find the blog on our website, articwolf.com. And we do a quarterly report, or Tetra Defense do a quarterly report on how the incidents they've responded to, how those incidents come about. And you can see here, first half of 2022, user action accounted for 19% of the ransomware or critical incidents that they've responded to. Business email compromise is rising massively lately. Um, but actually, external exploits and external expo uh, remote access, or external exposure as, as a combination, is one of the most prevalent initial access vectors that threat actors are using and that we see are being used. For these companies that we read about in the news that are being ransomware, it's because people aren't really fully secure in their, their external uh, defenses. And again, I heard a bit more about that this morning. So initial access, the different types of initial access that threat actors will use. External exposure. So the most common known vulnerabilities, we all know about Log4j and there's a whole list of other well-known vulnerabilities that are being exploited. And interestingly, threat actors are exploiting these known vulnerabilities within hours. Okay, so as soon as the CVEs come out, as soon as a POC for that CVE comes out, they're being exploited within hours, literally. We've got 4,000 customers at Arctic Wolf, so we see this every day. To give you an example, um, there was a a vendor, let's say, a perimeter vendor, I'm not gonna say who they were, who had a vulnerability um, not too distant, uh, not too, too far along ago. Um, and it was not really published that well, but Arctic Wolf, we saw 70 people being actively exploited. That's not what the vendor said, but we saw 70 customers being actively exploited. Not affected, there was hundreds affected, but there was 70 being act actively exploited. Patching is important, but again, it's a bit like monitoring all your security tools. You've got so much coming at you. Where do you start? What's the right place to start? And again, that's some of what we do at Arctic Wolf. User action, generally less reliable than an external exposure to attack an organization, um, but high reward. Business email compromise is rising massively. Misconfiguration, small percentage that we see, but it's growing. So cloud security posture management is something that for those of you that are adopting public cloud, which I'm guessing is almost everybody in this audience, is something you need to look at. Cloud is very easy to consume. It's opt-in security, shared responsibility model. You really need to know what you're doing. And, and quite frankly, a lot, of, a lot of people have transitioned from their traditional infrastructure to be cloud architects. And you need to do that securely, and you need to know about that information. And then risky external exposure. So uh, and again, this is what I heard earlier, you know, RDP being exposed to the internet. So I'm going to talk about the top two, external exposure and user action. Root, <laughs> these are not my slides, by the way. <laughs> Root point of compromise or product of compromise. This is what we're seeing out there. So Exchange still leading the way in terms of uh, most critical vulnerability that's being exploited out there in the market or in the, in the wild. VMware Horizon with Log4j, RDP being open, being uh, open to being exposed uh, out there. This is what we're seeing uh, in Q1 and Q2 of this year through our Tetra organization. User or business email compromise and user action manipulation. So business email compromise, 34% of our IR cases in Q2 this year. And that's a rise massive. So that's where we're going in. People have been compromised and it's business email compromise. <coughs> Again, it's things like Office 365, most organizations I talk to are now in Office 365, very much an opt-in security model. People consume it, but don't know how to harden it, how to use the best practice to make it safe to use. 80% because 80 of the organizations that the Tetra organization went to didn't have MFA installed, didn't use MFA with Office 365. I've asked this question before, I'm going to ask it again. Hands up, who uses MFA today? Thank God for that. I did, a, I did a presentation once with about 15 people in the room and uh, a couple of people didn't put their hands up. And I'm like, you need to stop talking to us and go and get some MFA. <laughs> you know, that's the first thing you should do. Amazingly, 80% of those business email compromises were because of MFA not being enabled or no dark web scanning, no looking for account takeover breach data on the dark web. Who scans for account takeover data on the dark web? About half of you, interesting. 54% of mal malicious documents over email, 23 
percent compromised credentials, poor password hygiene, password reuse, etc. And trends we see, you know, zip and password like it's 2009. It's amazing how many how much malware can get through if you zip it up and then send through a password. It's ridiculous. And as I say, opt-in security makes business email compromise easier. It's very much an opt-in. And of course, you've got things like Uber, uh, obviously, that had MFA installed, but were MFA bombing the user in IT, who then clicked yes after he got WhatsApp by the uh, threat actor. It's about user education as well. Okay. And ransomware costs a lot. OK, so what should I do? What should you guys do, in our opinion? What should you guys do? Or buy? Well, the answer is clear. According to an IBM Ponymon report in 2020, the more tools that you buy, the less you have the ability to respond to an attack. And I think that says quite a lot, if you just digest that for a moment, which is the more and more security tools you put out there and you purchase and you put in defense in depth, more and more layers, the less chance you've got of actually catching something. Most organizations have enough security tools today and don't need to buy any more. What they need to do is be effective with the security tools they've got, operationalize those security tools. But it's okay because we've got XDR and that's going to solve the world. And you can see all the buffaloes running towards XDR because it's the latest buzzword or DR that we can use in cybersecurity. Cybersecurity vendors are shocking in terms of acronyms, buzzwords, shiny little things you should run towards. There's two types of XDR in our opinion. One is built around an EDR platform. There's lots of vendors out there. And what they've done is originally said, all you need is EDR, because it's all about the endpoint. Realized it's not all about the endpoint, and therefore have changed to XDR, which is actually, we need to look at the network, we need to look at cloud, we need to look at authentication. But it's still built around their EDR tool, which is fine if you want to be locked into that EDR tool not if you, if you want to change potentially in the future. We talk to lots of customers actually who change their EDR tool. And actually a lot of customers are moving to Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. I'm not advocating Defender for Endpoint at all, but what I'm saying is it's a pretty good EDR tool and it's about the ELA for Microsoft. It kind of makes sense from a commercial perspective. Or you can have an open XDR platform, which is obviously what we do. And that has an element of EDR. EDR is really, really important. It's really, really important information that we need when we're doing our, our approach to security operations, and so we ingest that from the EDR vendors. But we're open, we work with all of the EDR vendors. And again, we want full visibility. In fact, from an Arctic Wolf perspective, our platform is vendor neutral, and always has been vendor neutral for the last 10 years. We started from the position, which is particularly, you know, perhaps the harder road to take, that if we have an open platform where we accept any telemetry from every single security tool you've got, you're no longer forced into lock-in or choice or using a particular tool to use a particular service. It's the approach we think is the right approach. It's probably the harder route to take, but it's the route we took. And it's quite an interesting um, slide, I think. Where do incidents come from? So this is across our 4,000 customers. How many Arctic Wolf customers? You know, where do incidents come that affect our customers? And you can see 10% 10 comes from the endpoint, but it's not just the endpoint. So these are... You know, incidents that required a response action. And you can see that it's across authentication, cloud, network, identity, and the endpoint. And so it's really important. XDR is a really good move forwards uh, in terms of defending. So what does Arctic Wolf do? Well, we kind of bridge the gap in terms of security operational SecOps. And what we bring to our customers is take customers from where they typically are today, which is defense in depth, lots and lots of security tools, that they've bought to protect themselves, quite rightly, you need those security tools to protect you. And frankly, these tools should be doing their job. Right? They should be doing their job, that's, that's what you've bought them for. But where customers really want to be is business resilience. Uh, and so what we do is bridge that gap and get customers to business resilience, where they are confident in terms of how they can respond to incidents, they're proactive about their security, they're very adaptable, they're continually working to improve their security posture. For us, it's not just about reactive. And in cybersecurity, we've all, we're all at fault in some respects to being very reactive to threats. See a threat, react to it. For us, to be effective in cybersecurity, you need to be reactive and proactive. You need both together. If you're not proactive, then, then frankly, you're probably not going to be where you need to be. 
We work across the NIST cybersecurity framework. These are the five functions in NIST, identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. We've got services that map across these, across this framework. And we really take customers from where they are today and mature them and really do a transformation of their security, a security transformation. That's what we bring to our customers. <clears throat> so how do we do this? First of all, we're vendor neutral. We'll take all of the telemetry from your endpoint, network, identity, into, uh, uh, into our platform, which is cloud native. It runs in AWS. It has to be cloud native because the sheer scale we run at. To give you an idea, our platform we ingest from our 4,000 customers about 400 billion data points a day in real time and analyze them in real time. And so we have to run in the cloud because it's only the cloud can scale to that sort of speed, scale up and scale down. Once we have additional technology we'll include in our service. Okay, so we have something we put on the endpoint, something we put on the network as well. I'm not going to go into the details of that. That's not to replace your EDR tool. It's not to replace your network perimeter tools. It's really strength in depth. It's to give us better visibility, better detection capability, and containment capability. So we bring all of that data into our platform, and then we inject a massive amount of threat intelligence. Some of it from Tetra Defense that I talked about, from that threat intelligence company that, uh, that um, incident response company that we purchased in the US. We also have a lot of commercial paid for feeds. We work really closely with Department of uh, Homeland Security, Department of Defense in the US, MASISA. Uh, we have our own Arctic Wolf Labs organization of threat researchers. So hundreds of people that work in threat research, reverse engineering, forensics, uh, engineering, detection engineers that work and bring that intelligence into our platform because it's really understanding what's emerging in the market. And again, because we have 4,000 customers, that puts us in quite a unique position. And, and critically, they're on the same platform. It's not 4,000 customers with the cloud seem each, where they're sort of looking at a goldfish bowl, looking at themselves. We're looking across all our customers. It means if we see something in one customer, we can inoculate all of our customers. It's crowdsourced threat intelligence, and it works really well. As soon as we see a new emerging threat, either through the research or through one of our customers, we can immediately inoculate all of our other customers and write those detection rules and deploy them to the platform and to the endpoint, to the network. <coughs> we have several services that we provide. Managed Detection and Response, MDR. This is really about threat detection for you on your behalf and then response and guided remediation. I guess the critical difference with Arctic Wolf is we own the outcome. If you think about what people have done in the past, Quite often people would outsource their security to maybe an MSSP that runs a SIEM tool for them and they put all their data in that. And what we hear a lot from customers is that's great because at least somebody's looking at your information 24 by 7, but quite often they'll throw an alert back at you. And then you have to do the last mile. You have to go and do the investigation and work out what you're going to do. That's not how we work. What we will do is own the outcome for you. And it's all about owning the outcome. That's the difference with Arctic Wolf. So we'll only elevate verified investigated threats to you our true positive rate is 99.9%. I've never heard of anything so high in the industry. So they are real incidents with actionable actions when we elevate to you. And it might be that we contain automatically or we might <coughs> work with you and tell you exactly what to do and then handhold you and guide you all the way through the process. We also have a managed risk service. This is continuous vulnerability scanning. Scanning on your endpoints, scanning on your network, scanning on your external facing assets. Remember the Tetra statistics that we talked about, scanning the dark web, looking for account takeover data, scanning your cloud for security posture management, looking for misconfigurations in your cloud infrastructure. Now, there's lots of tools out there that will do this sort of thing, and you can buy a bunch of tools and do it yourself, but again, it comes back to have you got the people? And actually, out of those tools, you'll get a massive long list of misconfiguration, vulnerabilities, and things you need to do, and you're already stretched. Um, so how do we inject people and process into both of these? The final one is managed security awareness, where we do a training program that is about building culture within your organization. And it's not an hour long security awareness course that you put on another screen and click away and go, oh, compliant, that's uh, Cyber Essentials ticked. What we do is deliver three minutes worth of content every other week. High quality production content that's fresh, never repeated, every other week to our end users, and include phishing simulations. It drips it in, it keeps it top of mind. And actually, the outcome we're driving forward with the managed security awareness is one thing. Well, obviously, we want them to be aware of the threats that face the organization. But the one thing we want out of the outcome out of that is when somebody does something wrong, they put their hand up straight away and tell you. 
That should be the only outcome you're driving towards in your security awareness training. Put your hand up straight away. Now, the key thing that I haven't talked about here is this concierge delivery model, and that's really what makes us unique. Security operations about people, process, and technology. To be effective, we believe you need all three in unison to drive those outcomes for your business, for your organizations. And that concierge delivery model is twofold. One is reactive, 24 by 7, 365. We've got about 450 security analysts globally. We're operating at a massive scale. We see nation state attacks every day, ransomware, all sorts of stuff. So really you know, expert people that know how to respond and will handhold you through that incident response. The other side is interesting for me, the concierge delivery model. We align every customer, their own concierge security team with two tenured security engineers, minimum 10 years experience, they've been around a bit, and their job is not reactive. Their job is purely proactive and strategic. They will take our customers on a security journey where we meet with a the customer, these are named people that know your organization, know your business, know your network, know your security, know your outcomes that you're trying to drive towards. And they will build a security journey tailored to drive you to that outcome, which might be reduce cyber insurance, it might be adopt cloud securely, it might be achieve cyber essentials or ISO 27001, whatever that outcome is, we'll build a tailored journey and own the outcome for you. We'll do the work up front and we'll just continually improve your cyber security posture. Maybe we'll look at your endpoint, maybe we'll look at your external access, maybe we'll look at Active Directory, maybe we'll look at cloud, We'll build this journey so that we are continually reducing your cyber risk and improving your security posture. And that's a win-win for everybody. It's great for us if you're all secure, and much more secure. And it's great for you because you're more secure and you can drive these outcomes. And that's the bit I think that is really different about Arctic Wolf and incident response. So that concludes the presentation, which is a little bit ahead of time, which is good. If there's only one thing to do today, there's two things actually. One is, come by a stand, put your name and email address in the fishbowl and maybe win a waterproof Bluetooth speaker, which I guess you could use in the bath. The other is this, check your response. This is our advice. Before you buy anything else, and there's lots of things to buy, before you do anything else, make sure you have your incident, res uh, incident response plan. You've looked at it, you've checked it, you've practiced it. It is the most important thing you can probably take away, in our opinion, from this conference today. And that's it. Any questions? Yeah. Stun silence. Love it. So, how do we safeguard log data? Yeah, it's a great question. So a lot of the stuff we bring into the platform is API driven, as you would expect. So things like Mimecast, Proofpoint, Office 365, CrowdStrike, you, know, you name it, is all API securely into our platform. Log type, syslog type data, we put something on your network, on the inside of your firewall, which has actually got a managed IDS built into it. It's also a syslog target. So you can send any logs you like to that. We'll encrypt them and securely send them up to our platform. And obviously we're ISO 27001, SOC 2, Type 2, etc. I've got, say, uh, state protection, regulation, that kind of stuff. If you log file itself, what do you kind of do the same? If you've got PII information in the log file, if you're sending a syslog with PII, we'll extract it as much as we can on the sensor, and we're going to tell you straight away to stop sending us PII data. You shouldn't be sending it to us. Really, we're taking, secu out, we're taking security syslogs in, which shouldn't have PII data in it. However, if you had some in it, we'd spot it on, we'd try and spot it on the sensor as it comes through, as we pass it, and we strip it out. And then we put it securely somewhere else and tell you about it and open an instant. Honestly, the problem is that you're sending us PII data. <laughs> we'll do our best to try and you know, tell you, to detect it and tell you about it, obviously. Any other questions? Yeah, we get usernames, we get IP addresses, we get email addresses. But that, that is security telemetry versus PII data. It's not the actual data we're taking, it's all the security telemetry from your firewall, from your EDR tool, from all your other security tools that you've got. Sure, so the paths and actions that people are taking will still have like names and stuff on them. But, I mean, Which is what you're doing with your EDR tool today, right? I guess. We will get the alerts from the EDR tools to us. We also have our own agent on the endpoint which gives us better visibility and detection capability and we won't be picking that data up ourselves. Um, so whereabouts is the, is the telemetry data hosted? So for EMEA customers, it's it, well everything's in AWS because it's a scale we run at. 
For EMEA customers, we host it in Frankfurt, in the Frankfurt region, in Germany. The reason we put it in Germany was because it's the strongest data privacy laws. So, as we expanded into Europe, it's like, where are we going to put, which region of AWS are we going to use? And it was Frankfurt was the obvious one to use. Just to also Business email compromise is on the rise massively. All on Office 365. Office 365, on absolutely. A lot, a lot of, you know, lots of people talk about ransomware, but business email compromise is massively on the rise. We see it a lot. It's several times a week. Yeah. You need MFA, even if you've got MFA, you can get MFA uh, uh, fatigue. And, you know, there's all sorts of problems. Yeah. Yeah. So we integrate with Office 365, with Security and Compliance Center, Azure AD, all of those kind of stuff as well. Any other questions? Thanks very much, and yeah, time wins.